Welcome to Digital Logic Design. Throughout this tutorial, I would request you to keep pen and paper with you and solve the problems as we go along so that we can identify our knowledge gap and also consolidate what we just learned. A counter is a circuit that can increment or decrement a count. In digital systems, counters are commonly used to count the number of occurrences at certain events or to generate timing intervals or to control various tasks in a digital system or to keep track of time elapsed between events. Synchronous counters have the exact same clock. Asynchronous counters don't have that. We can also design counters using an adder, but counters can be implemented more economically using flip-flops such as JK flip-flop or D flip-flop or T flip-flop. Furthermore, asynchronous counters are slow because of their cascaded clocking scheme. We can build faster counters by clocking all the flip-flops at the same time, which are called synchronous counters. Now, synchronous circuits are realized using combinatorial logic here, as shown here, and one or more flip-flops. The stored value in the flip-flops are referred to as the state Q, of the circuit and under the control of the clock signal shown here the flip-flops change their state as determined by the combinatorial logic that feeds the inputs to these flip-flops okay so the design of synchronous circuits or synchronous counters basically boils down to designing this combinatorial circuit that inputs to the uh, flip-flop Okay, so how exactly do we design synchronous counters? So if we're trying to design an n-bit counter, we know that we need n flip-flops, and all these flip-flops will be operated using the same clock. Synchronous counters, this counter design then basically boils down to determining the combinatorial circuit that are used to input to each of the uh, flip-flop. So let me illustrate this point with an example. Let's say we're trying to design a 4-bit synchronous counter using T flip-flops. Now this could be any other flip-flop as well, such as JK flip-flop or D flip-flop. Since it's a 4-bit synchronous counter, we already know that we need 4 flip-flops and 1 common clock for all of the flip-flops shown here. So here we have 4 flip-flops here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 T flip-flops, which are clocked with the same clock here and the flip-flop outputs Q0, Q1, Q2 and Q3 Q3 actually didn't show here basically form the count that we are trying to count so we only need to determine what inputs to give to each of these T flip-flops here so what goes here what circuit goes here and what circuit goes here and what circuit goes here that's the question we're trying to answer when we talk about uh, synchronous circuit or synchronous counter design. So how do we determine that? <coughs> I'm now going to give you a high-level overview of the design procedure. So first we decide which flip-flop to use and write down the flip-flop transition table. Next what we do is that we prepare the next state table. Lastly we find the logical expressions for each of the flip-flop input using Carnot map. Now with this high level description you might be as confused as this confused panda here. So let's look at each of the above steps in detail with an example. Let's say that we're trying to design a 3-bit up counter. So the counter is 3-bit which means it counts from 000 to 111 which corresponds to decimal 0 to 7 and it's an up counter which means it counts from 0 to 1 then then 3, then 4, then 5, then 6, then 7, and then it comes back to 0 and the count starts all over again. So the first step of designing a 3-bit up counter is to decide which flip-flop to use. So here we're trying to design the circuit using a JK flip-flop. And then what we do is that we write down the flip-flop transition table as shown here. 
So here's the transition table for a JKF flip-flop. Here Q of t indicates the present state of the flip-flop output and Qt plus indicates the uh, next state of the flip-flop output. So here on the left side, this on the columns of Qt and Qt plus 1, I've listed all possible combinations of the uh, present state to next state transition. So we have 0, 0, we can, we can have a transition from 0 to 1, or 1 to 0, or 1 to 1. Now, to consider the right-hand side of this transition table, what we need to do is that we need to look into the characteristic table or truth table of the JK flip-flop. So this is the characteristic table or truth table of the JK flip-flop. So when both inputs are zero, the JK flip-flop basically holds or remembers the last output. And when both of the inputs are one, the JK flip-flop basically flips the output or toggles the output. and one both of the inputs are different, that is one is zero and the other is one, the output basically follows the J value. So this is the characteristic table or truth table of the JK flip-flop. Now to construct the transition table on the right, from this characteristic table or truth table, uh, we're trying to decide basically which JK inputs can cause this zero to zero or zero to one or one to zero or one to one transition. So we construct the transition table. We're basically trying to decide which JK combinations can cause the present state to next state transition. So if we look into the first row of this transition table here, we see that the present state is zero and the next state is also zero. So we then ask what JK inputs can lead to this zero to zero transition. To answer this question, we'll, we look into the characteristic table. We we'll see from the characteristic table that if j is equals to zero and k is equals to zero, we can have a zero to zero transition. But we also see from the characteristic table that if j is equals to zero and k is equals to one, it is also possible to have a zero to zero transition. Therefore, we write j is equals to zero and k equals to x in the transition table. Here x means that the k input could be either 0 or 1 to make this transition possible. Now if you look into the second row of the transition table right here, we can see that the present state is 0 and the next state is 1. So we ask what jk input could possibly cause this transition? To answer this question, we again look into the characteristic table that if j is equals to a 1 and k is equals to 1, we can have this 0 to 1 transition. But we also see from the characteristic table that if j is equals to 1 and k is equals to 0, this row here, we can still have a 0 to 1 transition. Therefore, we write j is equals to 1 and k is equals to x in the transition table. And in this manner, we complete the entire transition table by noticing the transitions of the present state and the next state output, and then trying to figure out what combinations of jk can cause this transition. And based on that, we complete this transition table. Now we use the transition table. And the next step is basically to use the transition table to determine the next state table. So what exactly is a next state table? So this is an example of a next state table for our 3 bit up counter. So here Q2, Q1, and Q0 are the outputs of each of the three flip-flops that we're using. And Q2, Q1, and Q0 here the outputs of the three flip-flops represents our, divide, our desired count. And Q0 here is the rightmost bit. So basically Q2, Q1, and Q0 is our count. That is changing from 0 to 7, and again, uh, and it goes on and on. So just to remind you, we're trying to design a 3-bit up counter here. So if the present state is 0, 
then the next state is 1 and if the present state is 1 the next state will be 2 and if the present state is 2 the next state will be 3 and so on when we reach at the last row that is if the present state is 7 the next state is 0 and the counter starts counting all over again now to complete this next state table we also need to determine which j and k values can cause this present state to next state transition for each of these flip flops so in the first row here q2 transitions from 0 to 0 as it goes from present state to next state and to determine the values of j2 and k2 here that makes this 0 to 0 transition of q2 possible we'll look into the transition table and check what values of j and k can make a 0 to 0 transition possible we see that if j is equals to 2 uh, j is equals to 0 excuse me and k is equals to x we get a 0 to 0 transition from present state to next state therefore we just write it here 0 x and then move to the next row in the next row we see that q2 transitions from 0 to 0 as it goes from present state to next state we've already determined that a 0 to 0 transition needs j equals to 0 k equals to x which is why we write 0 and x in this row in the third row again for q2 you have a 0 to 0 transition as the flip-flop goes to present state to next state so you again copy that 0x in the fourth row here however we have a 0 to 1 transition of q2 as q2 goes from present state to next state so we ask what possible inputs of j and k can cause this transition to answer this we we'll look into the transition table and see that 0 to 1 transition is made possible by j is equals to 1 and k is equals to x so we just put 1 and x here and in this manner we complete the two columns of j2 and k2 from the uh, q2's present state to next state transition and the uh, transition table once we've done that we again go back to the first row and do the same thing to determine the J1 and K1 values that enables the present state to next state transition uh, of Q1 basically so if we go back to the first row we see that Q1 transitions from 0 to 0 as it goes from present state to next state that's why J1 and K1 again becomes equals to 0 and X in the second row for Q1 uh, the transition occurs from 0 to 1 as it goes from present state to next state we again go back to the original transition table and see that 0 to 1 transition is made possible by j equals to 1 and k equals to x which is why we write 1 x here in this manner we go on and on until we have determined the j and k values for each of the combination for each of the possible transitions of q1 as well as Q0. So there you have it. So the next state table is constructed. So what we do next is that we build six Carnot maps for each of these six variables, J for each of these variables, J2, K2, J1, K1, J0, and K0. And in, it, in each of these Carnot maps, we use the present state of the flip-flops this this columns here this column here basically so we use the present state of the flip-flops as the input of the Carnot map as the input variable of the Carnot map and the flip-flop inputs that is J1, K1, J2, K2 and J0, K0 as outputs of the Carnot map so this problem will have 6K maps which helps us to determine J2, K2, J1, K1, and J0, K0 with respect to the flip-flop outputs Q2, Q1, and Q0. 
so we have one k map for j2 we have one k map for k2 we have one k map for j1 we have one k map for k1 and we have another k map for j0 and we have another k map for k0 so if we construct the Carnot maps we get this so here the input variables are the present state columns of the transition table q2 q1 and q0 and the outputs are basically uh, the uh, right right columns so basically these columns are the basically Carnot map outputs so we consider this axis as don't care conditions of Carnot map and when we solve this Carnot map we get an ex we get expressions for j2 k2 j1 k1 j0 and k0 with respect to the flip-flop outputs q2 q1 and q0 so these are the expressions that we get when we solve the Carnot maps once we've gotten this expression we've basically gotten our combinatorial circuit that we need to design a 3 bit up counter we, we, we then just draw the circuit so this is the flip-flop 0 which outputs Q0 and this is the flip-flop 1 which outputs Q1 and this is JK flip-flop 2 which outputs Q2 and the count basically is Q2, Q1, 0 Q2, Q1, Q0 excuse me where Q0 is the rightmost bit and as you can see that since J0 and K0 are both equal to 1 flip-flop 0 basically gets 1 for both of its inputs again since both J1 and K1 are equal to Q0 that is the output of the first flip-flop flip-flop 0 so the output of the first flip-flop is the input to the J and K inputs of flip-flop 1 and again uh, the flip-flop 2's inputs, that is J2 and K2, are Q1 and Q0, which is why Q1 and Q0 are ANDed by this AND gate and is fed into the J and K inputs of flip-flop 2. So there you go. We have designed our 3-bit synchronous up counter that counts from 0, 1, 2, up to 7, and then starts over again from 0. Now we can also design the counter using D or T flip-flops which will result in 3K maps and make the process less lengthy. So for D flip-flop we'll only have 3K maps that is one for D2, one for D1 and one for D0 and for T flip-flop again we'll only have T we'll only have 3K maps one for T2, one for T1 and one for T0. Now I'd like to request you to pause this video and try to solve this problem yourself. So design a 4-bit up counter using T flip-flops. So 4-bit counter means it counts from 0000 to 1111, which is basically 0 to 15. Using T flip-flops, so you need 4 T flip-flops, the outputs of which will be uh, Q0 to Q3, so uh, please pause this video and try to solve this problem. Okay, so hopefully you've gotten something like this. So this is the inputs of the four T flip-flops. And if we were to draw this, we get uh, this four bit up counter here, which requires four uh, T flip-flops and clocked with the same clock. So this is a synchronous circuit. So this is our four bit synchronous up counter using T flip flops. We'll see some more examples of synchronous counter design in another video. But for now, thank you for your time and let me know if you have any questions in the comment section.